Miller Highlight, the beer that's acclaimed the country over as the national champion of quality, presents the battle for the world championship of football. Yes, fans, get set as the Brewers of Miller High Life bring you all the action, thrills, and excitement of Major League Football's 1952 championship game. This is Harry Wismer bringing you the 1952 Professional Football Championship of the World in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, where bright sunny skies and chill temperatures offer ideal football weather as the Detroit Lions take to the gridiron against the Cleveland Browns. Among the 50,000 present were Wellington Mayor of the New York Giants, Art Rooney, owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and probably the only impartial rooter in the crowd, Mr. Bert Bell, Commissioner of the National Football League. In direct contrast to the Frey to follow, both spectators and players stand at attention for the national anthem. Detroit's co-captains Bob Hornschmeyer and John Tricklick win the toss from Cleveland's Tommy Thompson and the Lions elect to receive. Lou Brosa comes forward and slams the opening kickoff high and deep into Detroit territory. Yale Larry takes it right on the goal line and comes back up the middle of the field for 20 yards. Detroit halfback Bob Hornschmeyer and a cross buck goes over his left guard for a five-yard pickup. On fourth down, though, the Lions are well short of a first down, so Bob Smith drops back in punt formation. Smith's high spiral is pulled in by Ray Renfro on the Cleveland 30, and Renfro returns 10 to the Browns' 40-yard strike. Ray Renfro on the Browns' first play from scrimmage takes a pitch out and rips around right in for a first down on the Lions' 48. Delayed Buck, fullback Harry Giacchetti rambles through the middle for eight more yards. A penalty pushes the Browns back to the Detroit 45, but not for long, for Harry Giacchetti puts on a devastating display of running power as he tears into and bowls over several line tacklers while going 19 yards. That's just shy of a first down on the Detroit 26. And on third down, quarterback Graham gives the ball to Jacady again on a straight power play. It's good for the first down of the Lions, 21. Two plays later, Otto Graham, while attempting to throw one, is snowed under for a 10-yard loss back in the 28-yard line. Third and 17 for the Browns. It's Jacady carrying again on a trap play that goes for seven yards. Fourth down and 10 yards to go for Cleveland. And they're going to try for a field goal. Lou Groza will kick in the 29-yard line. Groza kicks, but it's wide to the left. Then the Lions take over. <laughs> Quarterback Bobby Lane feeds off to Hunchy Hornschmeyer, who darts into the Cleveland secondary for 12 yards and a first down. <laughs> Bobby Lane fades the pass, finds no one open, but sees clear sailing on the ground and tears through the center for 19 yards and across the midfield strike. Drops back to throw and this time spots and hits Stoke Walker for an eight-yard gain. <laughs> On first down, two big Cleveland tackles, Bob Gain and Gerald Palmer, storm in to smother Bobby Lane for an eight-yard loss. <laughs> and the following play, Lane makes up that loss and more with a 16-yard heave to big Leon Hart, who's dragged down in the Cleveland 32. <laughs> Fourth down finds the Lions locking a yard for the first down, so Pat Harder futilely attempts a 37-yard field goal. And the ball goes over to the Browns on their own 20. <laughs> on a play that's almost broken up with the Lions' right end, Jim Doran, Cleveland's Ken Carpenter takes a deep pitch out and swings wide for a five-yard gain. <laughs> Graham fakes the pitch out and gives off to Jacady, who cracks the Lions' line for a first down in the Cleveland 31. <laughs> After three plays, the Browns find themselves pushed back to the 29 and are forced to punt. Horace Gillum gets off a kick 
It covers only 21 yards and goes out of bounds at midfield. From that point, the Lions go right to work. As Lane fires the Cloyce box for the first down in the Cleveland 40. Bobby Lane displays his extreme versatility as he spins away from on-rushing linemen and sprints for another first down on the Brown 27-yard line. That ends the first period with no score in the game. Begin the second quarter, fullback Pat Harder on a trap play, blasts through the Browns for 10 big yards. The Lions let loose with some razzle-dazzle football. His lane laterals back to Doak Walker, who passes into the end zone. It's intended for Cloyce Fox, just misses. Answered down, Bobby Lane comes back into the picture with a perfect little Zwiecki. It makes it goal to go for the Lions on the Cleveland three-yard line. Penalty cost the Motor City men five yards, but Doak Walker makes that up as he skirts his right flank and goes right back to the three-yard line. On the following play, Bobby Lane on the quarterback sneak pushes his way across standing up, and the Lions leap in front, six to nothing over the Browns. On the try for the extra point, Pat Harder's kick sails through, and Detroit leads Cleveland seven to nothing in this championship battle. Detroit kicks off with Pat Harder sending the ball down to the Cleveland 10, where big Marion Motley pulls it in, and Motley makes a nice return, 30 yards in all, before the Lions trip him up. Two plays, the Browns lose five yards, and on third down, the Lions toss Otto Graham for another five-yard deficit, making it fourth and ten for Cleveland. Horace Gillum. Standing well back, receives a poor pass from center, but grabs it, and from his own 10-yard line, Gillum gets away a tremendous kick that finally rolls dead on the Detroit 12-yard line. Strong defensive play by the Browns right end, Len Ford, number 80, bottles up the Detroit offense as Doak Walker on third down is thrown for a two-yard loss. Fourth and two for the Lions in their own 20, whereupon Bob Smith drops back and sends the ball spiraling upfield. Ray Renfro takes it and is dropped on the Cleveland 44 after a short return. In slow motion, the Browns' Otto Graham drops back, then lobs a short screen pass to his fullback, Marion Motley, who shakes off one Lion, but is run out of bounds after gaining five yards. Big Marion Motley again does the late work, this time on a delayed buck that's good for the first down on the Detroit 43. Here's that same play, but in slow motion. Watch the Lions' two guards get trapped as Motley bangs through the line for 10 yards. Motley on another quick thrust in the Detroit forward wall, picks up six additional yards. Closely, and you'll see Detroit's guard, Les Bingaman, number 65, leap and deflect Graham short pass, just enough to throw Ken Carpenter, the intended receiver, off stride as the ball falls incomplete. On third down, Graham again on that short flat pass. Connects to Ray Renfro, but Renfro's path is blocked, and he slips to the turf while attempting to cut back on the Detroit 39. For the fourth and nine situation, the Browns elect to go for a field goal. Luke Rosa kicks in the 44-yard line, but it's low enough to the left. So the Lions are given possession on their own 20-yard line. The second down, Pat Hodder cracks over his right tackle for seven yards. <laughs> 